It's been about two, oh, I would say three years actually, since I installed some Swan cameras on my house. And some of those cameras were 1080p cameras. Some of them were five megapixel cameras and some of them were 4K cameras. I also tried to install a couple of solar panels that were connected to some external wireless cameras and a indoor camera. And you can find all those videos actually back in the video history of this channel. What I wanna do today is I actually wanna have a look at how these cameras have performed over the three years in the sense of what was the good about them what was the bad and also I want to have a look at whether the cameras are even working today so the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to go down to the where the DVR is installed and we're going to connect a monitor to it to find out if the cameras are even still working yeah let's jump into it so you can see here that I've got the uh, 4k DVR and I also have basically everything up and running still there was nothing obvious when I looked over here in terms of how it was looking like if there was anything really wrong with it um, so what I did was I've connected this HDMI cable here and on the other side I have connected it to a TV so what I'll do is I'll go and turn it on on that side okay so when I turn the TV on uh, what I happened was I actually got the blue screen of death actually not the blue screen of death but it was a swan logo and it didn't really turn on so what I did was I switched this DVR off and how I did that was I just pulled out the plug from the top of where it's been connected in and when I did that and reconnected it I found that the power would not turn on then when I tried with a different adapter so this is the faulty one when I tried it with a new one again it turned back on and and I went back to the TV and everything is actually running. So this looks like the only thing that has actually stopped working. And I think these are like 20 or 30 bucks from the shop to get another adapter to suit the camera. And there you go. So that's what we are seeing at the moment. So what I will do is I will zoom in for you. Now, when I looked at this, the only thing that I noticed had changed and um, you can kind of see that there is lines running through it. So you can kind of see these sort of lines that are running down over here. I think that it has to do with the temperature when the temperature is a little bit more hot and the cables are maybe exposed or something of that nature I find that these um, these lines sometimes appear in particular it happens on this one over here and the other one that it happens sometimes on is this one over here this one has been much better now because I have done something else made it a little bit more protected from the heat uh, the BNC cable but this one is in the garage so the garage gets quite hot and that's what it is so another significant issue which I found and it's something that we just have to be very wary of as people who are just consumers of security cameras and that is that when you are dealing with a camera that is using a BNC cable there is a limitation of resolution and FPS and what they mean by that is that as you increase the resolution from say 1080p to the 4k cameras you'll find that there is a significant drop in the frames per second and why this is important is because when we go and we use that camera in a specific scenario we want to make sure that it is able to capture what intending for it to capture for example we want to use a 4k camera and we're using it in a moving environment it might not be making that much sense particularly if you want to catch live and smooth motion uh, on camera for example if you're using it in a shop you may actually find it more useful to drop down the quality of the image to say 1080p and increase the frames per second so that you're getting a clearer easier on the eyes image but one of the things that I did find is that installing the camera too close to to the soffit very close to a 90 degree wall where you've got some sort of connection so something that looks like that and you part you put the camera down over here if that connection or that area is too small then you will find that uh, spiders and things like that love to create webs because it's a, it creates a really nice place for um, them to actually do their business so you actually want to have some distance between walls that are running perpendicular to each other um, having a little bit more distance will allow you to have less less issues down the line in terms of the Sofit, what I also found was that putting electrical tape around the connectors was extremely effective and when I opened up some of these connectors I found that none of them had rusted but in one case where I had forgot to put the electrical tape on because I had done an installation for somebody else their, their one actually had slight rust on it and I think that's because some of the water had leaked in from the top of the roof into that soffit and drained into the um, into that area. The good thing about that 
though is that with the flush box in the previous video I mentioned how I put a little hole I drilled I think it was a two millimeter or one and a half millimeter hole at the bottom of the flush box so that the water could drain out and I found that this thing actually helped quite a lot in terms of any excess water that could have potentially got in there even moisture to keep the place dry because there's still air moisture that maybe causes some water condensation so looking at the solar panel the interesting thing about the solar panel was that one side the connection was housed with a watertight connection and that's particularly where the solar panel was but the other side of the camera doesn't actually have a watertight connection and what that meant was that you kind of have to put this camera in a covered position okay so this was the camera that we installed at one point in one of the other videos so what I'll do is I'll just take it off and what you can see at the back is how the camera is installed and this is kind of what I mean that like that connection between the um, USB and the camera is not watertight so it kind of can be prone to leaking if you're not careful with it the other thing is that the door smashes too quickly then you'll find that this camera actually falls down so yeah so I think that this connection on this side as well needs to be watertight. Both connections really need to be watertight. And if you don't have the solar panel installed, you will find that recharging and charging it can actually become fairly inconvenient if it's not installed in a place that is easy to access. The problem is that if it's easy to access for you, then it's also easy to access for burglars and, and whoever else may be interested in swiping or, or getting past the camera. So it's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, ease of access is a good thing because you can access the camera, but on the other hand, you have an issue of the camera not actually being able to safe in, in that sense. In one of the videos beforehand, I actually installed a Swan floodlight and the Swan floodlight had features of being a floodlight, uh, being a camera, being a alarm system, so it would actually sound a siren as well. And this is what happened. I installed a tree in front of it, installed, I planted a tree. I planted a tree in front of it and the tree grew very big. And I don't wanna cut the tree down because it's a pomegranate tree and we only have two of them. So I wasn't able to get the best benefits from it. So that's the reason why I did not use this camera as much as I would have liked to. Having said that, one of the things that I would say about this camera is that it has been very reliable. It's been a camera that I would say I was quite impressed in terms of the features and what, what it provided. The fact that it's a floodlight and you can turn the floodlight off is good. The fact that it's a security system and you can turn it off with the flick of a switch is not good. And maybe this might be the case that you need some sort of rechargeable battery in the system so that the camera can remain on. The thing that I really took notice of was the fact that one day I did try to sound the alarm um, just out of interest to see how loud it was. And I found that the alarm was not very loud. I feel like the alarm could be louder because the reality is that you're using this floodlight and an intruder enters into the um, area and the purpose of the alarm is to deter them the alarm needs to be at least loud enough that your neighbors can hear and I don't think that it's loud enough that your neighbors would be able to hear now this is just my personal opinion you would probably have to hear it for yourself yeah I think that it's performed really well everything is good it's just that the alarm maybe could have been a little bit louder so yes there were some things that I noticed over the period of time but this wouldn't have stopped me I think purchasing the cameras if you ask me if I was to purchase those cameras again today I would argue probably I would do I would probably purchase them again because even with the disadvantages you could say that I have mentioned none of them really were enough to say say stop me from purchasing the camera they put me off the camera for good and so really what I'm trying to say here is that you really need to think about how are you going to be using your cameras and what is the purpose of them and I think a great way of doing that is that before you even go to the shop if by chance you're still in the market looking for cameras just write down in a little piece of paper in a journal what the cameras are required like so what what are the cameras that you need what what are they going to be doing and what are they actually going to be capturing and if you do that beforehand before you go to the shop what you can do is you can customize your camera setup a little bit more and you're going to be more happy with the result when it's all said and done so I hope you enjoyed that and you found it useful and yeah if you need some questions or you have some questions feel free to leave them in the comments i have been generally quite responsive to the comments in the previous videos and i'm more than happy to 
to answer anything that comes to your mind as long as it's within my technical capability. Let's leave it at that and I hope to see you in the next video.